Good evening, televiewers. You are welcome to Prime uh, this evening. We are sorry for the late start. We had some hitches with uh, technology. We're struggling to get through uh, perfectly to our guest for tonight, who is uh, there, uh, ready to discuss and have a great conversation with us uh, this evening on uh, the points I earlier announced on our respective uh, social media handles. This evening on uh, Prime Hour for the very first time, we are receiving Dr. Ngu uh, Nick Santos. We understand that he was uh, formerly a very key figure in uh, the separatist uh, movements um, that uh, are actually engaged with the government of Cameroon on uh, a possible uh, cessation of the southwest and northwest uh, region, but he is the president of the uh, one Cameroon Congress uh, today, and uh, I actually got through to him because of a letter that was addressed to the President of the Republic, His Excellency, President Paul Bia, calling for uh, discussions with uh, the separatist members of the separatist uh, movements outlining 83 names. So I felt the need to discuss with him uh, to clarify what actually is in the package of our proposal that he is bringing uh, towards uh, finding a lasting solution to the ongoing crisis rocking the southwest and northwest uh, regions. Uh, Dr. Uh, Nick Ngu Santos, we are glad to have you on Prime Hour for the very first time. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Kuhn. It's a pleasure joining uh, all the way from the United States, uh, fellow viewers, uh, thank you very much. And uh, you know we are having network challenges, but I am glad to be joining from the United States of America. Thank you, fellow viewers. Okay. Uh, doctor, I will start by congratulating you for the award that you're going to be receiving, a lifetime award. I don't know. I saw you yesterday sharing with the Cameroon's ambassador to the United States of America. What is the award all about? Yeah, Mr. Kum, uh, I know that most of the people who have been watching me on the television have been mostly uh, attracted to watching my, my programs, uh, specifically on politics, but uh, they fail to understand that, or maybe they did not know that I am a mental health practitioner. Uh, I am a, I hold a bachelor's degree in uh, political science and history. I hold a master's degree in counseling psychology and a doctorate in applied clinical psychology. Uh, I also own a, a private uh, a clinic, mental health clinic, which is my practice and also work for the government on contract basis. So uh, I've been doing a lot of work in the domain of mental health uh, since about 12 to 13 years, because uh, even before my master's, I was doing a lot of work in mental health clinics, residencies, and others. And then I also did my doctoral residencies, and I've been working in mental health clinics in Washington, D.C., uh, West Virginia Department of Health, and also running uh, mental health agencies here in the U.S., one, of course, which is mine. So the issue is uh, this is given as a, a reward to hard work, uh, what I bring you into the package, which is a multicultural, multicultural perspective of therapy when it comes to treating with mentally ill patients. Uh, the fact that I've been able to demonstrate this uh, professionally, academically, and also volunteering in the United States in various uh, hospitals, clin clinically mentally ill hospitals, have earned me a lot of awards. So this is one of the key awards. There are four awards I've had. And this is the most powerful one, which is the uh, U.S. President's Lifetime Achievement Award that I was receiving on September 29, uh, 2022. Now, I saw you with the Cameroon's ambassador to the United States of America. Are you, is, is he your friend? And uh, we understand where you stood some years back. Today, you are seen discussing with him. Uh, since when did you become friends with him? Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Kum, for asking me that question. Um, you must understand that uh, uh, we are Cameroonians. We are Cameroonians. The passport we carry outside here 
is the Cameroon passport. All those things that uh, overtook our emotions and reasoning uh, when we went into uh, this uh, struggle or this conflict, you know, almost everyone was bitter with the marginalization and with the arrest. And I will tell you that about 80% or 90% of the people who stood in 2017 and 16 behind what is today called the separatist struggle or the amber struggle, most of us came to realize that we were over emotional, we were over reactive, and we started studying the situation with a group of persons that we acted with and we discovered that people had ulterior motives or people had different reasons for pushing what is being pushed now. People have allowed themselves uh, not to reason anymore. And because of that, some of us were very early enough to have discovered about three years ago, I discovered that that was the wrong track to go, especially as a professional. And what happened? I tendered my apology for if I overreacted, replaced my step, began doing a peace mission, reconciled with the, with the Cameroon government officials, tried to see where I could assume that perspective of bringing peace to the nation, trying to work to bring both parties together on the table. That has been my, 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 my goal since three years ago. It did not start today. It did not start yesterday. You remember my political party of participation right in Cameroon, right in the United States, had been before the CPDL. And let me tell you, a sympathizing or, solidar or, or standing in solidarity with the marginalization of Southern Cameroonians does not mean that I did renounce my, part, renounce my party of origin, or I did resign from my party of origin. And that's why you could have heard that I even ran for election, for the CPTM election, section election, in the United States, although I did not make it to the finish line, but at least I was a, a candidate. I announced myself as candidate. No. So you should know that, um, yeah, you should know that um, I have, uh, if I earn an award in this country, an award that comes from the White House, uh, when a child goes out and he earns an award, it's normal that the child should bring the award to the father of the house for blessing. It's normal that that award should not be given on the 29th of September unannounced to the Cameroon government because I will be also raising the country's flag on that particular occasion, which is an American event, but I have to go and present it to the ambassador that this is what I am bringing home. And he received me warmly. Uh, we, we discussed also about uh, everything that has been going on, where I am in the peace process, what is new, like the One Congress agenda, One Cameroon Congress agenda. We discussed a lot of things about reconciliation, peace, and moving forward. So that's why I went to the ambassador. That is why you went to greet the ambassador. Yes, uh, you said uh, you reconciled uh, with the government of Cameroon. Now, are you saying that even as a separatist, when you were fully involved in all of that, you were still militant of the CPDM party? Because you are saying that you did not renounce your are, you 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 are, your party. Yes, Mr. Kuhn, uh, there is a difference between separatists and CPDM. CPDM is a political party in Cameroon. Separatist is not a party. I'm telling you that when this crisis began, most of us who joined the in protesting or or agitating. We're doing so because of the marginalization. And in the marginalization issue, about 70 to 80 percent of all citizens of the southern Cameroon joined in this cry. And later on, there were a lot of people who had hidden agendas that hijacked it and took it to the extremist point of view. And so some of us who went into it finally uncovered them, uncovered that there were a lot of gangsters, armed robbers who came into this, rapists and other kind of people who had their own secret agenda. And so we started pointing them out and said, this is not a place to be. And that's why somebody like myself resigned from the separatist government of the interim government and went back to my political party like 
a party that I had not even resigned from it because there is no, you cannot mix uh, 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 belonging to the separatist angle or sharing their point to, with a party, be belonging to a party. Every Cameroonian has to belong to a political party. I mean, it's their right, but they have to belong 18 years and above. I, my own party has been the CPTM since from the time I was in the university where I was the vice president of CPTM in Moliko. So I have never resigned from my political party, and I, I, I resigned from the separatist movement. I joined my, I rejoined my political party fully, fully, and I even ran for elections here, as I've just indicated to you. Did, do you believe that militants of um, the U.S. CPDM section trusted you when you came back, and do they trust you today? Uh, Mr. La Mr. Kuhn, to answer that question to you, I will tell you yes and no. Let me tell you, it is not, I don't go, I don't take decisions, or I don't make decisions following what the people think about me. I make decisions about where I stand at that particular time in terms of critical thinking. I am that kind of a person that I will consult with the majority, but I will the final decision will rely will depend on me to make my final stand or not. Because first, I'm a well informed and I believe by virtue of my profession, uh, decision making is critical. Because I don't only do analytical decision making, I do meta analytical decision making as a psychologist. Because my, my career, top in my career is diagnosis, treatment planning, and decision making or recommendations and prognosis. So the point is, there will be people who are not happy by having been with them in the separatist angle and left them. And there will be people in the CPGM who will not have confidence in me. But the bottom line is, listen to what my reasonings are or listen to what made me to make these decisions and don't look go by the by the flow of the wind people will not decide to put food on your table people will not decide on 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 uh, uh, the day you are taking a risk it's not people deciding it is you making that decision of where you want to belong at any particular time thank you okay now, um, recently you wrote to the President of the Republic under the canopy of the One uh, Cameroon Congress. Why do you write, uh, why do you think it is uh, time to uh, engage in the action that you are requesting uh, the government of Cameroon to undertake at this time? Yes, Mr. Kung, I will tell you that this is not the first initiative that I and others who had left the separatist side have initiated and proposed to the government. The first initiative was during the Grand National Dialogue when the delegation that was sent here by the head of state, led by Professor Fru and Wafo uh, and uh, Professor Ufi Chinje, they came to the United States. At that time, I had not even completely renowned the separatist movement. I was a member of the Transitional Restoration Council. And I convinced the other members, although in opposition, but I convinced even Seseko Julius, Ayok Tabe, Dabli Yerima, uh, and the others, Sako Ekome, for them to put some documents, Bob Gahamoni, to put some documents which I gave them to take to Yaoundé during the Grand National Dialogue, to see how they can listen into the, some of the cries of the people over here, especially those who are actively controlling people on the ground. So let me tell you, uh, this is not the first time I'm coming out with that initiative. And let me tell you, there was the Peace Task Force initiative that was born. It was out of my hard work and is still existing today. There was the Ghana Peace Conference that we attempted to bring together people to go for Ghana for a peace talk, which was opposed by all the frontline separatists. And now, there is the one Cameroon Congress, which is made, made up of predominantly those who had resigned from the struggle in terms of leadership in the diaspora and combatants, ex-combatants of the separatist side, who are in the one Cameroon Congress, who think that it is a time for us to be in the best position, best position to propose to the government of Cameroon and also propose to the separatists 
that it is high time to lay down the two and go into the negotiation table or a dialogue table. And this is not a problem because it is going to help them. And it's going to help the federal government to solve the problem. And it's going to help also the, 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 the boys the ground from being killed because the death toll has been too much. And I believe this is the best thing we have to propose because right now we understand this, the, 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 the both sides better, better being now in a neutral angle, angle of peace. Okay, you said you started this peace initiative even while you were still um, partially with uh, the separatists you met with uh, Professor Ngwafo in, in the United States. Now, yeah, you said you, you, you made proposals to uh, Sako, Ayuk Tabe, and a host of others. Um, what was their reaction? Did it go through? Uh, were you of the opinion that they should come to Yaoundé for the major national dialogue, and why did they refuse? No, uh, this is the point. Okay. I table a proposal for them to give their opinions, okay. to give their opinions about the national dialogue. And there were letters that were written by all of them. Basically, Ayok Tabe's letter was the terms and conditions for negotiation. Bob Gahamoni also wrote on the terms and conditions for negotiation and dialogue. Uh, uh, Atemken of ECOWAS also gave a document. Uh, somewhere is a Sako, Gandhi Yerima. They also had documents that all these documents were packaged and taken back to Kapun and were considered during the deliberations. These documents were handed by me to them because I said it will not be good for the people to come over here to talk about the Grand National Dialogue, although all of us say the stand is to boycott it, but at least send some documents for them to know what your revendications are. And these documents were taken to Yaoundé, and those documents were given by me. So I have always been a peacemaker. Even when I was in the separatist side, I knew that at the end of the day, it is peace and dialogue that has resolved all conflicts in the world. So while the others were embarked on military tactics and all kinds of things, I was actively involved in trying to reach across the government of Yaoundé on seeing how we can have a peaceful resolution on this matter. And as a result of that, they vilified me. They vilified me for trying to attempt to make some sort of bring, bringing the government officials together to discuss the matter. I did not advise also about them going to Yaoundé because at the time too, I couldn't go to Yaoundé, but I had representative right there in Yaoundé who were able to communicate to us everything that was going on and the debates that were going on there. So it has not been something like, I just got up and said, oh, I want to help in the peace process. I've been working on the peace process, both when I was partially in the separatist movement and after that, I took on peace to be the main objective that I've been working on for the past three to four years. Thank you. Now, um, Dr. Nick Santos, at what, mo what moment or what actually pricked uh, you to think that there was need to engage in peace uh, with the government of uh, Cameroon from uh, your former stance? Was it the fact that people were dying in Cameroon or uh, the fact that things were not going the way you wished? Thank you for that very important question. Um, I am somebody who says the truth without lying any day any, without a blink. I will tell you that when we got into this, uh, the, the argument has always been the force of argument and not the argument of force. And when we got into it, we were protesting for Anglophone against Anglophone's marginalization. And the best of our understanding was that introducing an armed struggle was a threat it was not ever meant to be reality. Introducing an armed struggle was only meant to be a, a, a threat. As Dr. Success, who attended all the conflicts, conclaves, who is working with me in the one uh, Cameroon Congress, who always testified to you people that there is what we call atalaku. Atalaku means you can say, okay, we are going to give a threat to the government that we are going to resort to an armed struggle if the government does not release those in jail, and Wobalas and others does not release Mancho BBC, does not do this and that and that. 
But that threat was never meant to be real. The only instance where that threat became real is when Ayabacho moved into Dadi and indicated that that was supposed to be an armed struggle. And then there was a final confrontation that led to skirmishes on both sides. It was then other people rallied and started putting up an armed struggle and sacked Ekome. Took over from Seseko and launched a my trip to Boya $2 million project, which that project reinforced, said was going to reinforce the armed struggle. And actually, some of the money were totally put for what was intended for. Some of it was embezzled by him. And given the fact that there was investment going on, there was a lot of casualties coming up on the ground for what was never meant to be an active arms struggle. I, as a professional, decided to say, this is not what I came in for. I did come for an arms struggle. I came to protest the marginalization of Anglophones, and I was standing by that threat, but not by the action of an insurrection of arms struggle, and talk that the possibilities of them ever winning is very slim. Because to confront a Republican army that is solid, there is virtually a very slim chance that you guys will get to the finish line. So I gave all my advice about this to them. None of them was killing to me or, or listening to me. They were all saying, oh, you have been bought over. Oh, you wanted your share of my trip to Boya. I said, no, by virtue of my profession in the United States of America. Let me, let me make this very clear, Mr. Kuhn. By virtue of my profession in the United States of America, I'm a humanitarian professional, I'm a doctor, I'm a mental health doctor, a, psych a clinical psychologist who has so sworn by the doctor Hippocratic oath of do no harm, beneficence, justice, equality, and be of service to humanity, preserving the, their dignity, justice, and everything. I cannot be killing, participating in any meeting that leads to the killing of people. Thank you. Okay, now tell me about your proposal of the One Cameroon Congress. How do you want it done? Because you came up with a list of uh, 83 uh, separatist uh, members and uh, you want government to talk with them. How will that work? Thank you very much for that question, Mr. Kum. You know, um, being a clinical psychologist who does meta-ethical deliberation, and who does um, mediation and conflicts both for families and children and homes in, 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 in the United States, uh, be, and they say the smallest unit of the government is the family. So uh, when there's a problem, and uh, some people who have been uh, uh, on both sides, uh, some people who have been on both sides and have been able to criticize the ills of the both sides, I'm not, pro I'm not saying that the Cameroon government is, 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 is innocent. They have their own, uh, their own part of the blame because it takes two to destroy. It only takes one person to destroy. Uh, being uh, someone who knows, uh, who, has been, who has been on both sides and lived with both persons and understand their psychology, and as a psychologist, I will tell you that if uh, no single country in the outside world has been able to endorse what the separatists stand for, has been able to come to their support for all progressing to six years. The international organizations of the world have turned their eyes on them. And then it means it's high time for them to think. And for them to think means that some people of goodwill, some patriots of goodwill have to sit in assemblies as I have always done for three years to four years now, sit in assemblies and propose what they think and troubleshoot and propose what they think can work for the good sides. Uh, reaching out to the Cameroon government is not the first time, as I've said. The Peace Task Force Initiative, the Ghana Peace Conference, the Peace Patriots, the Humanity Peace Task Force, and all the Northwest, Southwest Peace Task Force are forums and organizations that exist which are piloted, some of them are piloted by me, majority of them, and the one Cameroon Congress of ex-combatants and ex-leaders of the Ambazonia separatists 
who have now decided to become peace lovers and peace patriots and who have resigned from the separatist angle and whom the separatists have given them a death sentence by putting red crosses in their pages, like some of me, some of us. Because they think that we are acting uh, maliciously, whereas we are not acting with any malicious intent. We are not out to sacrifice them. We are out to some sort of maintain a neutral position whereby we can tell the government that this is really where the problem is. This is where the problem is. We can talk to our brothers, play a middleman position, talk to them, and let them sign a document that they are willing to talk. They are willing to talk at this time because the government has been asking the question that who do we talk to? Who do we talk to? So that question has been breached by the One Cameroon Congress. And the One Cameroon Congress is not a political party. I should answer that out, outrightly because, for example, I cannot belong to two political parties at the same time. I'm a CPM, everyone knows. And the One Cameroon Congress, all these are organizations or movements for peace. And the peace, the One uh, Cameroon Congress is made up of resigned separatist leaders and combatants who have decided to say, okay, we cannot sit and be watching the country go down into drain, whereas we have apparatuses that we will have suggestions that we can put in writing and send to the head of state. Send to the head of state, not like obliging him or forcing him, but proposing to him, pleading with him that the blood of our people uh, is being wasted, has been wasted a lot, and it is high time some of us come with an appeal that these, our brothers and sisters, with whom some years back we solidarized in fighting or in protesting the marginalization and all one not, they are ready and they are willing to talk with the Cameroon government, provided a hearing ear will be, or a listening ear will be given to them. And in this sense, we are saying that the Cameroon government Eli, should Eli, listen please. to their call. A writing from, from out of uh, from Boya, so many persons have written that uh, there should be a problem with the sound. Can you check that? On, on social media, there is sound, but seemingly on TV, there, there is a problem. I don't know where the problem is. Just go on, uh, doctor. Yeah, it was freezing. Yeah, go on. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can get you five on five. Go on. Yes. Yeah, so, as I was saying, uh, this letter is appealing to the head of state, appealing to the Cameroon government to understand that we, the ex-combatants and the ex-separatist leaders who are now uh, in organizations within the country, like or political parties, who had, were at once been with the forefront, been at the forefront with some of these leaders, both of those who are in jail and those who are still influencing the boys and girls on the ground who are in the bushes, they have expressed a dying need of an inclusive dialogue, they have expressed a dying need of uh, mediation, they have expressed a dying need for willingness to talk, and we stand now at the position to plead on their behalf with the Cameroon government that we are ready to help identify those who really the Cameroon government have been saying that they don't know who to talk to. So that question has been answered about who to talk to. The 83 man list that was presented is not an end, but it's a beginning list. Because in this list are people whom you all know, whom you have been seeing on social media all the time, on the separatist side, and the leadership of the various governments that are outside here. And in that list also, you have the people in jail. You have those of the Kofun Revolution, and you have those of the interim government. They are all on that list. So what we are proposing is that the people themselves, whose names are on that list, could narrow down the list or could increase the list with the other names of their collaborators so that 
the government of Cameroon knows exactly who to engage with at this time for a pre-talk. There will be a pre-talk before they become a final talk. Okay. And the pre-talk will set an agenda for the final talk. Okay. Uh, good evening to you, uh, Gonza Wilson, uh, Sophie, uh, Classical, and to you, Ngale Jimia, and Don Ndu Fred Agami, Royal Bond. Good evening to all of you watching us on our social media handle. But now, we want uh, talks with uh, separatists, and uh, you've come up with a list of uh, 83 names. We understand what happened with the Swiss uh, led initiative, not everybody endorsed it. We also understand that um, during the uh, last CDN meeting in, in Canada, not all of the separatists endorsed it, as well as the um, Tumis initiative for all Anglophones to come together. Not all the Anglophones actually endorsed it. When it was announced that government was opening talks with Ayuk Tabe, uh, we saw how that news was fought even from within they come of the separatists. How are you sure that these guys that you have named in this uh, list are ready to work together today? Mr. Kuhn, this list of 83 does resolve that problem. The problem has been that when they are going to Swiss, only some persons are choosing to go to Swiss. When they are going to the CDN, only some persons are, are choosing to go to the CDN. When they want to talk to with Ayok Tabe, Seseko, uh, uh, Chris Anu and Sako comes out and say Ayok Tabe has been impeached. So in this list, uh, you have all of them, and everyone ought to be treated on equal status, and the government of the country has to know that everybody has to be treated as equal because as a stand, no one outside here in the diaspora is actually an either a leader of the people on the ground except the people who are in jail that we know Mancho BBC and Julius Ayo are the persons who are the leaders but they are in a jail. So these people outside here, there is a struggle for that vacuum of leadership and everybody wants to take credit. You know, everybody wants to show that my organization is the most supreme. So if we allow this to keep on going in the diaspora, there will be endless confusion and the calamity on the ground will continue. So the only thing we have to do is let us give all of them a, a listening ear, bring all of them together without discrimination and tell them that this is the moment for you people, it's the challenge for you people now to put up a statement. All of you, if possible, narrow down the list or add to the list and indicate your willingness a joint statement by all of them that we are willing. We are willing to get into a pre-talks and a summarily talks that will solve this problem once and for all. And the government side, uh, can, I can only advise on the government side, I'm not giving instructions to the government, I'm begging and advising that the government, the government has begun an, a, a very positive initiative whereby the prime minister went on air and announced that the head of state has asked him to do a stop taking of the resolutions of the Grand National Dialogue. So this is a very good opportunity because while doing the stop taking of the Grand National Dialogue, we could do an addendum, an addendum to the Grand National Dialogue. Like if you wrote a book and you went and discovered that that book is missing some chapters, you can still write an addendum to that book. It doesn't mean that the Grand National Dialogue ended. Because even at the closure of the Grand National Dialogue, it was stated that the, di the dialogue will continue after the Grand National Dialogue. The dialogue will continue. And this can still be an extension or an addendum of the missing pages of the book that was written. So getting into spree talks with all these 83 persons, after having sampled their opinions, because their opinion is being sampled right now by one Cameroon focus in the sense that we wanted to come out with a statement endorsing at this time that they are ready for a genuine discussion or a genuine dialogue or a genuine uh, extension of the Grand National Dialogue with them being inclu inclusive to conclude on the missing pages 
of the Grand National Dialogue. Because if this is done, this will mean a shortcut to resolving this problem. Then on the government side, if that statement should come out, they separately saying that this is a good move. Because in this move, none of them have been sidelined. Ayaba is there. Yerima is there. Bo Habet is there. Uh, Akwanga is there. Uh, Seseko Julius is there. Mancho BPC is there. If a joint statement can be said we are ready, and this is the venue we are proposing for the pre talks At the pre talks we are going to we are going to discuss on where the final talks will take place. They can decide that time to keep to keep the members of the one focus away, keep them away, or you know don't listen to us anymore. So far as we have completed our mission, that the two sides are now uh, something positive they come out to write the missing to, to write up the missing pages of the Grand National Dialogue, then the one Cameroon Congress must have fulfilled its duty. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, how do you want our government to discuss with separatists who says, um, um, now, are you very, very convinced that backdoor negotiations are not going on? I beg your pardon, can you come again? I'm asking that you want everybody to get to the table uh, with the, the, the lists of uh, the names that you just uh, published writing to the President of the Republic. Are you very sure that backdoor negotiations are not on as we speak also? Um, not this kind. Not this kind. Because let me tell you, anything that takes place with one particular branch or one selected few does not resolve the problem. We know, we know the magnitude of the problem. We have studied this crisis for close to six years and we know the magnitude of the problem. The key problem is that the government of Cameroon has been embarking on a military option and the military option is not going to 100% resolve the problem because uh, the military option is expensive, costly, at the detriment of human life, whereas there is a shortcut that this problem will be resolved. And if anybody is holding talks with anyone, these talks does not affect the other camps because there are many camps amongst these people out here. And these camps, one will disagree with the other at the end of the day. So what will happen is we want something that will be transparent, something that will be open to all, something that will give a long-lasting solution, not a cosmetic solution. Mr. Okay, now um, you've written to the President of the Republic, and uh, are you also have you written to the separatists themselves? Mr. Kum, everything that was done by the One Cameroon Congress was officially submitted to the President of the Presidency of the Republic. Uh, you know, I'm the President, and we have about uh, 50 members who are ex. Uh, uh, leaders of the separatist side and, and, and fighters and ex-fighters and combatants. And uh, uh, the president is myself. The secretary general is uh, Dr. Success Komo. And we have a chairman who is Mr. Mr. Madiba uh, and uh, Mr. Madiba Tama. Tama. And you should know that um, when we wrote this letter, we are not doing things in hiding. Because what you do in hiding, it means maybe you have been motivated or being acting under influence of somebody after receiving an envelope whatsoever. No, we did not do that that way. And it was not meant to be a secret letter because the prime minister was copied and also uh, the various uh, uh, groups, the various groups of the separatist side were also alerted immediately about our existence and this letter and what we are up to. So there's almost every leader even up to Ayok Tabe in jail, John Ba Akoro, everyone have received a copy of this letter. We have we have get, we have already uh, gotten some reactions about the letter. Yeah, but most people have welcomed the letter and said this is the kind of thing they have been waiting for for so long. That God bless. I even saw some men of God release some, or I heard some photos released by men of God saying that this is a golden opportunity that God should bless us for this initiative and that uh, 
But they only pray that uh, this initiative should not come and die down like the others that have come up. Because many other initiatives have come up. But I think the other initiatives did not consider all the separatist leaders on the same, placing them on the same level and bringing the people in jail together in it, uh, including those of the Kofun Revolution and those of the era 10. So I think this is going to be uh, something that we wait to see uh, the reaction by a joint statement. We want a joint statement by all those who are in that list. A joint statement, not a separate statement, individually. Now, many persons see you as having betrayed uh, the cause and uh, uh, see you as a traitor. How do you live with this? And how do you also tell them that there were very good reasons for you to make the U-turn? Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know if I'm freezing. Am I okay? No, you are okay. Go on. Thank you. Um, uh, it's on my screen here. Let me tell, let me tell each and everyone. Um, great people. Great people. There's no great man in this world who hasn't worked on a difficult path. The path to greatness, the path to success, and the path to achievement is a very difficult one. People like Mandela, people like Barack Obama, people like, show me any one leader in this world who has not been criticized, who has not been vilified, who has not been uh, condemned or given names as a traitor, as this and that. Because you have your own personal uh, uh, critical uh, mind to weigh, to make to make a meta-ethical deliberation or analysis of uh, the pros and the cons, we are to choose between good and bad, or to choose between human life and bloodshed, to choose between uh, sacrificing for humanity and uh, 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 taking up uh, evil or satanic disease. It is left for each and every one of you because the day you die, you give an account to God yourself, and you don't give an account to God on based on what you decided as a group. Making a, making a, making a U turn was a very difficult decision I had to make about in 2018. Yeah, when I made a U-turn and said, no, this is not the right path to go. Uh, what was the oath in my career I took? Uh, as mentioned to you, that beneficence, non uh respect for dignity uh, and human values, uh, uh, justice, and other things. I know that there have been injustices on both sides, but the point is, what do I bring on the table that going to make a difference? And does this take that I am doing aligning my profession and what I have sworn a, a, a Hippocratic vote for? The answer is no. So I had to do, take my decision to retract and retrace my step on, on the part of history. And thank God, because of that, I am receiving awards for working for humanity. I'm not receiving, receiving awards because I participated with some people to kill some people. No. I mean, I am receiving it for working for humanity. And that humanity means leadership, not only professionally, but leadership in, in peace, leadership in other things, community work, leadership in volunteering, and leadership in showing uh, the right path to my people. So if anybody who wants to give me a name tag because I am not supporting his, his roadmap to making benefits, his roadmap to abduction, his roadmap to killing, his roadmap to enriching himself, his roadmap to raping, his roadmap to, to burning of houses, his roadmap to, 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 to causing mayhem on our people, pain on our people, and not having empathy with, 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 with the majority of the people on the ground who, are, who, who don't have money to put meals on the table because of this crisis and because of this problem, and it's good for his personal interest or their personal interest as a group over the interest of the people, Dr. Nick Stanton is not that kind of a person. And I will say it any day, any time that I will stand on the side of good culture in whatever. If you think uh, that um, you went uh, the wrong way and today you are working for peace, have you officially presented an apology uh, to those um, that were misled or uh, that uh, you brought harm on, 
especially families who today have been made orphans and um, a host of others? Uh, let me tell you, uh, as I will tell you, um, the part I took was the part for the marginalization, the marginalization, it's the part against the marginalization mm -hmm. of uh, uh, Southern Cameroonians. And for that part, it was protesting with peace plans about this. For that one, I owe no apology because that brought some meaningful results. We should differentiate here that there's an, and there are two problems here with Southern Cameroon. There's the Anglophone problem of marginalization and there's the Amazonian problem. The Anglophone problem gave birth to the Amazonian problem. And at the beginning of the Amazonian problem, it was just a threat. It was a threat that arms would be used and cessation would come about if the Anglophone problem is not resolved. Is not resolved. And with that, we know that those who jumped on board and started piloting it to extreme, to the extent of involving arms, those are the people I do not. And that's when I left them. So before the cutting of arms, the cutting of limbs, the destruction and mayhem, or the raping and the killing of people on the side of the separatists, I had left the movement. I had left. I had resigned and I had left. So there's no way anybody or any international criminal court or the government of Cameroon can tie me to cutting of people's limbs, cutting of people's hands, preaching about destruction, uh, sponsoring the activities on the ground that led to this because my job ended with the phone problem. At the time when the Ambazonia armed conflict problem was getting in, I had left. So they shouldn't associate me with that part of the story because at that time, I was preaching peace. At the time, when the delegation came here for a Grand National Dialogue, they were coming here to get resolutions to see what they can take back to include in the Grand National Dialogue package. I present that to them. And when I present that to them, is the time that they criticized me having gone and meeting the government of Yahoo, gone and meeting the government of Yahoo to discuss peaceful means. So you can see that I had good intentions, but it doesn't matter. Whatever I did, I've taken responsibility and I've made several video shows to sensitize the people on the necessity of peace. I have like 100 videos on peace. And by coming out, setting up peace organizations, talking to the people on a daily basis, carrying out peace moves, approaching the various embassies and so they sending representatives to the Grand National Dialogue to bring back updates, talking day to day with the Yaoundé government and the embassies, and talking with the separatist leaders out there for the purpose of peacemaking, and coming out to the one Cameroon, Cameroon Congress and writing to the head of it on the necessity of peace, then the people know that that alone is enough apology for anything that I did unconsciously, which I didn't, or which I am not even tapped like one of the guys who are guilty of bloodshed because I was active, not a member any decision making over the killing of the people. Okay. Um, if you have a question for Dr. Nick, just send it to me. I will pass it over to him. If you have a question to post to Dr. Nick Santos, send it to me on WhatsApp using the numbers on my screen, and I'll ask, I'll ask him. Now, uh, doctor, you are certainly, you are from the Northwest region. Do you miss Bamenda? Are you talking with people? My brother, frankly, mm -hmm. frankly, everyone in the diaspora misses his or her homeland. Anybody who tells you a lie that you miss your, your, your traditional meal, you miss to see your people, although we have the traditional meals here, but it doesn't taste the same like the one, the organic ones down there. The beef here does not taste like the beef down there. The fowl here does not taste like the fowl down there. There's no fresh white palm wine from the forest from coming from the palm tree directly. All these are chemical stuff. So let me tell you, if anybody is telling you that he or she living in the diaspora does not miss his or her homeland, miss the grandmothers and extended families, that person is not being honest. And to be candid with you, 
one of the one of the things that is fueling the anger among the separatists is the ability of them not having had the opportunity to be granted amnesty to come back home. So, you know, somebody who misses home and misses all these things has more anger because he's missing his homeland and missing dear ones and cannot partake in issues because he's afraid of being tapped a terrorist. He's afraid of being arrested at the airport and even to have the visas to come over there for some of them is a problem because some of them who have not openly identify themselves and what they stand for still remain a threat to the Cameroon government and still remain a threat to even the people. And let me tell you, the justice is both sides because uh, uh, if you have been acting in one capacity or the other, even if the government spares you, you are not free from the hands of your people. So that's why I'm telling that it is not only amnesty from the government, amnesty from your people as well. Because if you have been on the other camp, your people don't want you anymore. If you have been on the government side, if you have been on the separatist side, the government don't want you. So everybody now should have some amnesty in one form or, or the other. And that amnesty has to come only through a national peace and reconciliation after there has been peace talks, free talks, and, and definitely peace talks. Thank you. Now, um... Doctor, are you talking with the, the people on the ground? You, um, you say you miss Bermenda and uh, home. Are you talking with them? What are they telling you? Do you measure uh, the weight of what they are going through today? I have done my homework. I have done my homework. I come, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a child that respects tradition. Uh, I am somehow related to the palace of Nkwen directly or indirectly. My mother's father was one of the great uh, kingmakers of Mkwen uh, that migrated from Bafut, Pa Asongo Potala. He actively came to Bafut, came from Bafut to participate in building institutions in Mkwen under the direction of the front of Bafut. And when he was coming to Mkwen, he came with his Bafut wife and married four other women and added with between five or six women that my grandfather had, my mother's father. So let me tell you that as I speak, it's a shame that currently the phone of Ben is hiding in the world. How can you imagine that the phone of Ben is on is an IDP in Duala? The phone of phone. Okay, seemingly we have some technical issues out there. Once Doctor is there, uh, let us uh, know. Uh, please um, let us know when uh, Doctor is back, where we struggle to get back. Uh, yeah, it, it, okay. it was a call. You had a call? You had a call? No, just go on. So, that was, that's the problem I'm talking about. The people have expressed their bitterness on what is taking place on the ground. Most people regret for what they got into, that the suffering is too much. They are being harassed by armed robbers who pretend to be separatists. They are being uh, 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 raped, kidnapped, gone shot, fried. They don't know when they will be alive. They, 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 they are being killed. I mean, and some of them say it's not only the military that is doing this. The most of the pain on them is more done by civilian people with guns that claim to be armed boys or separatists. And also because of that, the military as a result of that, is losing one or two of uniformed men. And when they come, that this, when this occurs and they come, they, they, they just shoot at anyone in this indiscriminately. And uh, because as a result of that, people die on a daily basis and they are calling on that this, all this suffering should come to an end. That we should find all means possible to bring this under control by engaging with both parties to be able to talk to be able to talk, to bring this on the ground. And the, the majority on the ground, their position now aligns with this position because what they want is, they want to see all these people we have mentioned in this document spoken to, and they want to hear a statement from them with regarding to ending of this crisis. Okay, um, someone is asking this question. Doctor, 
Uh, good evening. My question goes like this. Why did he not attend the meeting in Nigeria where Ayuk Tabe and the rest were arrested? If at all, he did not betray them. Thank you very much. Um, as I told you, that was the early days of the interim government. I was not a member of the of the executive of Seseko Ayuk Tabe. I was not. I was not a member of the cabinet. If I was a member of the cabinet, I would have been in that meeting. And by that time, uh, armed struggle had not begun. Had not begun. Um, uh, let me tell you that effective armed struggle began after the abduction, after the, the, the arrest of Ayuk Tabe, because uh, one of the reasons that the armed struggle began, especially you remember about the my trip to Boya and all those, that was under somewhere a commissar. And it was later... It was later in his government, not in the first days, but over, almost like uh, five or six months into his leadership. And let me tell you that happened, and that's when I resigned. So uh, if I was a member of Seseko team, and it was mandated for all cabinet members to attend that meeting, I would definitely have been there. I was only a spokesperson for the East Coast of America. And... Uh, uh, at that time, I was doing my famous program that you knew, which was psychoanalysis, the Ngambi man of the revolution. That time, I was analyzing uh, the pros and the cons of us uh, uh, trying to look at feasibilities of uh, over overcoming the marginalization, the marginalization without uh, resorting to killings and without resorting to arms. So, uh, for that question, I would let him know that if I was a member of Ayoktabe's government, and it was mandatory for me to be in Nigeria, I would definitely have been there. But know that if I was even there, it would have been a plus because uh, I would have articulated issues better. I would have articulated issues better. And I would have, it would have been a plus because I know, I know the persons within the government of Cameroon and within the political party of the CPDM that I can talk to when matters reach a certain level that they can listen to it somehow, as opposed to people who take stands that are totally contrary to government policy. Anywhere, well, anywhere I have, have been at the, at the forefront, I am always a subtle voice. I'm always a decision-making voice that can be, can be listened to, that can be meaningful results. And they will tell you that everything that occurred with them negatively the separatist side, I predicted it. If you ask even a doctor, he will tell you that two days or three days before he was abducted, I told him that his life is in danger. Why did I say so? I told him because at the time, Rene Sadi, the Minister of Communication today, went to Nigeria and was conversing with the represent the the, 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 the vice of President Buhari. President Buhari was was in uh, England or the UK, but uh, at that time when that discussion between the Nigerian authorities and the Cameroon authorities, I told Seseko Julius Ayoktabe that this is ill omen and this is bad news that I smell because something is not done. All of you will be rounded up. And it was not up to three days later on, he was picked up the others at Era Ten. So no. I'm always that kind of a person that predicts I'm so some side of but that's my job. A job as a psychologist is a seer, it's a shrink, it's a shrink, a hoteller. I have always been very, very uh, vigilant when things are about to come up, and I always uh, give an, uh, an alert, an alert that please take this route, don't take this route. This other route is not good. And that's how I can answer that question. Thank you, uh, Doctor Nick. Now, many persons would want to know you, what was uh, your role within the camp of uh, the separatists and uh, why were you also accused, like uh, the likes of uh, Sako? Okay, uh, I want to be very honest. Everything is verifiable. When you go to YouTube, I've not deleted one video. One video, single video, I've not deleted on YouTube because we stand accountable. In generations to come preparing for public office which definitely is one of my goals preparing for public office means you don't hide your past you have to have to leave those videos there there are videos there for me 
participating in the separatist side at the time I participated in the SCNC or Anglophone marginalization side. There are videos there when I ran for CPDM in the United States. There are videos there for the peak task force. There are videos there now for one Cameroon Congress as we speak. And this video is going to be one of the videos that going to remain. Let me be categorical. I joined the Anglophone marginalization protest, which was part of the Covenant Revolution for which Mancho, BBC, Agobala, lawyers, barristers, teachers protested. I was also part of it. But I solidarized with my learned colleagues. I solidarized with my people. But it was as a result of that, uh, I was doing psychoanalysis. We should understand that our community has not been used to the work of psychology. When there's trouble in every community, when there is shooting at a school, when there is volcano, when there's earthquake, when there is war, psychologists are needed not only to try treatment of the retinas or the disaster, to do the aftercare of therapy and psychiatric work. We are also needed to troubleshoot and propose decisions and try to weigh in and weigh out the pros and the cons. Try to, uh, we are the people's conscience and the people's minds and behavior for the community. We do a lot of work. So psychoanalysis, was like examining this step that we have taken the revolution, this step that we have taken protest against marginalization and stuff. Where are we going? Giving some stock taking in advance. Where we expect to be? How can we avoid problems? How can we avoid weaknesses? How we can overcome them? That was definitely my role as a psychoanalyst of the revolution that makes that caught the eyes, that caught the eye of Ayoktabe who appoint me as a spokesperson for the East Coast of America. When he appointed me, I said, what? Well, I am the service of my people. I am doing this independently by advice. Why should I? The spokesperson is also an advisor and a psychoanalyst, a spokesperson. Let me use skills for which he has appreciated me to come and inject my voice into this. And frankly, if I didn't join it, most of the people that resigned from the interim government of Sesek Sako followed my example, followed my preachings that we are not going to any boya. We are not going to any boya. You can go on YouTube and watch the video. That video I did it in Houston with Chiodong Gomba of Cry Out Television. It has 19,000 viewers. I told them that we are not going anywhere. If, if we have a vehicle, I remember the statements I used, that if we have a vehicle, all of us are passengers in that vehicle, and we are going to Buya, out of a sudden that vehicle is making a U-turn back to the United States, it means either the vehicle has a mechanical problem or the driver is sick. Those are the statements I used. And that brought an awakening to people that this is a scam. We should stop this scam. We got into a scam without knowing it was a scam. Because people had secret agendas in this struggle of the Anglophone problem. Are you, are the you, Anglophone problem is a problem from the Ambazonia problem. Uh, doctor, doctor, were you the chairman of the Mesa County? Let me tell you, I will say yes. This is what made me to become the transitional council chairman because you must belong to a county before you become the vice chairman of the transitional council. The vice chairman of the transitional council position was given to me after I had debunked Sako. I had left Sako. I had resigned from Sako that he's a scammer. Then Seseko Ayok Julius had been in incarceration and in hiding. Oh, no, 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 no. Was kept uh, 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 out of public eye for a very long time. So we now went back to the counties, mobilized the counties, and pledged allegiance to Seseko Julius Ayok Tabe in jail, as opposed to Samwe Komesako and Chris Anu, that we fired. Fired them. We went to APNC 
in, in, in Philadelphia to dismiss Sako and Chris Arno. And, uh, and everybody, Cometa Evans came over and testified that Sako is misleading the people. And Sako stole my trip to Boya money and decided to invest it in, in, in stock exchange markets. Yeah, but why, so why, we why, saw that. Why were you also, why were you also accused um, when you did not, uh, did you also control uh, part of the money? No, no, no. I have never been a treasurer for any organization. I have never been a president. I have never been a treasurer. I have never been an accountant. I have never been a finance coordinator for any budget, for anywhere in this particular matter. So anybody who comes about that is the, is the accusation a counter accusation because you see one camp is trying to say that we are the king. If you go this way, we will vilify you. you we are this. Just for example, uh, Siseko Ayotabe, when he was, he, uh, as a result of coming out from where he had been, uh, out of public view, uh, reconstituted what we call uh, the Transitional Reconstitution, uh, Constitutional, uh, Transitional Restoration Council. So let me tell you, and I was honest at the beginning when I indicated that it was this vice chair position of the Transitional Restoration Council that gave me the powers to collect all these letters from all the leaders and present it to the delegation of the Grand National Dialogue that came to Yaoundé, came from Yaoundé. Because if I did not have any any position, I would be, I would not have been meeting the delegation from Yaoundé. So I don't refuse what that what that person has asked as question. But he should know that you should know that I resigned completely about three to four years ago from the separatist side. And I stayed for some time quietly preaching peace under the peace task force initiative. Uh, founded the peace picture after I ran for the CPM, I came back to my party and ran for elections in the United States for the CPM section. So uh, and that answers the question. Okay, uh, you want government to engage um, the 83 persons you have named in your uh, letter to the President of the Republic. What if they say we are negotiating nothing short of a separation? How do you settle that? Um, this is, there's, one, there's one thing here. Okay. There's one thing here. Mm. We have had this kind of deadlock all the time. Uh, the inability to talk leads to more deaths and we can go on to 100 years. In this particular situation, we understand that the government is on the high road of defending the territorial integrity and maintaining a one Cameroon and decentralized Cameroon. That is the policy right now, for which some of us have appreciated that Decentralization is a good beginning point. Special status, which the name may sound and rejected by many, is not a, a, a bad a bad initiative, not a bad step. But I have always indicated that when two parties are at a deadlock, whatever is given as a piecemeal should be embraced, and we can constructively arrive at a point whereby we can have changes that will move us forward. We will not be stagnant or will not stay in that uh, 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 position of what pushed us in the first place to come out because at least some of the things that we set out to get, we are beginning to get them and we should arrive somewhere to satisfaction to what we get. I have mentioned to you that the separatist idea originally as we know was meant to be a threat. And if tomorrow the separatists are insisting that if the government is not willing to discuss independence, they will not be part of the discussion, then I will tell you that it's an error on the separatist side. Because if the government, if the separatist wants to go into conversation with the government at this time following this appeal, the best decision for them is to say, yes, we have been having difficulties in discussing with the government or even meeting government officials to talk about our problem. The government has not, we are not part of the Grand National Dialogue as an extension of the Grand National Dialogue and as 
an addendum or writing of the missing pages of the Grand National Dialogue, we will embrace this opportunity to have a pre-talk. In that pre-talk, we will determine whether we will, we will attend the definitive talk. If this 83 man wants to keep us away, the one Cameroon Congress members who have brought up this idea, if they want to keep us away at that time, we will stay back. Our mission has been accomplished by opening up another medium by which the both parties can start up. That is our mission. Now, what is the take you have of the international community? You are out there in the United States of America. There are persons who insist that uh, they can only engage in uh, talks with a third party uh, present. In what you are proposing, who is going to uh, be that third party? Who is going to be mediating? And how uh, are you going to work it out? Where is... Uh, um, uh, where are you going to keep the Federalists and the Unionists? Uh, how is it going to operate? Thank you very much, Mr. Kuhn. You have asked a very good question. For five, five years to six years today, we have been hearing the same thing of third party, third party. No, no peace without, no, no peace without justice. Uh, United Nations is going to come to help us. Uh, OAU is going to come to help us. Our neighbors, our neighbors of Nigeria, Biafra, Biafra will help us. Let me tell you, these are languages being used by people who are so happy with the trait on in human life, the trait in human life, for which they are making a lot of profits, and they don't want the, 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 the struggle or the conflict to come to an end. There is no international mediator or international body that is going to step in to do anything without the authorization of a nation state. All of us know what is international relation. Cameroon has international, so it has sovereignty, sovereignty, and it's a country, it's a nation that for which any action should be taken for any intervention or foreign intervention, it has to go through the Security Council, it has to go truly officially, uh, officially through the government, it has to be through the enforcement of the nation state. And uh, uh, things that are discussed among countries, Things are discussed among states. Ideas are discussed among states about resolution. It's not discussed among individuals and states. If it's discussed between individuals and states, it has to be a situation whereby a country decided to take up a line and decide to put it as a challenge or as an item on the agenda. This has not happened for five years to six years because they believe that the issue can be resolved through dialogue, through dialogue, which is uh, 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 the fact that the government of Cameroon has been pursuing, although with weaknesses, because it has not been inclusive. The primary problem we have is that the dialogue has not been inclusive. And so that gap of inclusivity, inclusivity is what we bring here to fill. We want to bring the other people so as they can talk and conclude those chapters that have not been written and I think uh, uh, we, we or some other persons in the international community who are Cameroonians, who are Cameroonians of good standing, can decide to help through this process. It doesn't mean only that they are going to bring foreigners to discuss about this, you know, because if really you are fighting a war, Mr. Kuhn, and you know that for this amount of time, this is, you do a stock taking and know, calculate your damage, the damages, calculate the victories, calculate the possibility or the, 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 the feasibility of, 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 of achieving all your, your goals. And you see the obstacles and barriers. And in order to overcome them, if I take this route, it will be at the detriment of human, more human life. Of what need? Of whose interest will it serve? For you to have a nation, and then at the end of the day, all human beings have been killed. It doesn't profit no one. It profits us to come into conversation with the forces that be, or the powers that be, through any channel that is possible, to try to ease this tension and to try to resolve this problem. Waiting for an international community that will not come, that has not come, and there is no possibility of them coming in soon, that will lead to more deaths, 
more atrocities, more mayhem, more suffering. Why not take the shorter course, which is to discuss with the government if that opportunity is given, if that opportunity, if the people, this is a challenge. This particular proposal of one Cameroon Congress is a challenge. It's a challenge to the secretary to test their unity. But this is the first time that 83 of them from all the factions, including all the people in jail who are considered leaders, who are at the forefront, who influence that of the people on the ground in the bushes, are coming together and seek their name on one list, requesting that they should give us a challenge. That challenge is putting out a joint statement that we will be ready to talk. We will be ready to get into a pre-talk if the head of state will give us an ear, a, a listening ear start. It will also be an appeal to the government and in the present international, international community that if such an opportunity presents themselves, then the government turns it down, then it will mean that there are people also on the part of the government that do not want the conflict. Thank you. Now, Doctor, we've seen the international community react to Ukraine. They are actively involved in uh, pushing for an end to the crisis. We've also seen them actively involved in other uh, areas in the world. Can you explain why they have been reticent in uh, moving into pushing and uh, forcing an end to what is happening in Cameroon? The response is simple. The response is simple. The, what we have in Cameroon and what we have in African continent and the kind of leadership and the kind of independence we had answers that question. Neo-colonialism and uh, the fact that we have never been in completely independent from France. Yes, that's the answer to that question is simple. Because let me tell you, who blocks, who blocks this issue from being discussed in the United Nations? It's France. It's not even Yaoundé. It's France. It's not Yaoundé. I'm a Pan-Africanist as well, as I will tell you. But let me tell you, a Ukraine issue will, will, was, was quick because uh, 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 Russia is a member of the Security Council, uh, but you had the other powers of the Security Council that aligned, that aligned with Ukraine that were able to is it quickly bring this the floor for debate and get the support to the Ukrainian. Uh, the case in Cameroon has been a case whereby France persistently brought the issue to come up because France, France believed in forming petit petit states, which will be contrary to their goal of maintaining a solid Africa, uh, which has been created in their own liking and image and tell it. To, to back their economy. Let me tell you, if we have to answer this question, why the whole world and the international community is slow to get into Cameroon for this issue, the response is simple. France is the main obstacle about it. And, the, and also, uh, I would say that the leadership, the leadership of Cameroon is a leadership that functions in alliance with this with in the foundation of the of the instruments of decolonization as laid down by France. So uh, opposition to it uh, will be a very difficult thing and uh, also uh, opposition to it is met with stiff resistance at the level of the diplomacy uh, which is at the level of the Security Council and the United Nations. So that's just simple about the response to that question. Okay, let me take some messages. Good evening, Mr. Leo. Your program is very interesting. Please, Mr. Leo, help me and let me send a message to my nation, Cameroon. I'm in prison. I have a lot. I have weaknesses, please. Okay. Um, good evening to you. I don't know which prison you're writing from. Good evening, Mr. Liu and your panel. My question to uh, Dr. Nick is, what is the stand of Southern Cameroons in this mission for peace? Or is it a peace talk for the return to uh, the, the president's decentralized state? Randolph is writing there from Yaoundé. 
Uh, good evening to you, Randolph. Good evening. Please, can you ask a uh, doctor that since the day he stopped being an activist, has he come to Cameroon again? Okay, uh, good evening to you. This one says, good evening, Mr. Leo. I'm watching your program from Bamenda and Ta Mafe. It's quite interesting. My name is Fru Precious. Good evening to you, uh, Precious. Um, I'll take some more messages and then uh, we wrap up the discussions uh, with uh, Dr. Nick Santos. Good evening, Mr. Liu and the panelists. Mr. Liu, everyone in the Southwest and Northwest wants this war to end. And I like the way your media is pushing for peace to return. I've been following your programs. Can you also invite a separatist leader to come and share with you their own point of view on your platform to ensure the people are not misled? Thomas is writing from Dubai. Good evening to you, Thomas. Please ask uh, Dr. Santos where he kept uh, the money that was collected for the head of Mezam County. You have an excellent program. The only news and information agency in Cameroon. I listen to God bless you. Um, you are writing from the UK. Good evening to you. Um, this one is Achu George in Bermenda. You said you are a CPDN militant. How credible is your party to resolve the Anglophone problem and the Ambazonia problem. Achu George is writing from Pamenda. Okay. Uh, Achu George. This one says, uh, Good evening, Dr. Nick. After writing to the government of Cameroon, have they replied or show any signs to yield to the ideas? On the other side, are any of the separatist groups interested in your suggestions? Lastly, are you people going to act as the mediator or third party? That will solve the problem, meaning no other international body or country is needed. Eno Charles Nkongo is writing from Kumba. From your explanation, it means you people are capable of acting as the mediator. How binding do you think the decision can be if the government fails to respect the decisions? What can your association do? Okay, I'm sure they're going to work with the government. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Kudos to Dr. Santos. For his stance today, we want to see him on the ground on a peace crusade talking to both military and separatist fighters for restraint. What was the my trip to Boya fund for? And doesn't he think the embezzlement of funds uh, was a blessing? Linus is writing from Bermenda. Hello, this is Brandon from Finland. Please ask uh, doctor that the government of Cameroon has vowed not to talk with the separatists how are you sure your effort will make the government of Cameroon to change its standards? Okay, uh, Brandon from Finland, good evening to you. Um, <clears throat> now, can you convince any reasonable person that if you were given the button of leadership of Ambazonia struggle, you would have made a U-turn after you? Tabe Gupma is writing from Bamenda. Good evening to you, Gupma. Um, Doctor, the government said through the Prime Minister Chief Dr. Dion Gute when he came to Bermenda after his appointment that Papa is ready to dialogue on all issues except separation. How do you think these preconditions on both sides would happen? Dr. Alusius uh, Chi is writing from Bermenda. Hello, Mr. Liu. My question to Doctor is can the struggle against marginalization end with the Francophone president? Don't you feel more confident to go to Cameroon with another regime in power? Max Begini is writing from Dusseldorf in uh, Germany. Uh, doctor, I don't know whether you noted down some of the questions and you have answers for them before we continue. Yes, I have been writing down some of the questions. Okay. Um, the first one, I will start about uh, the monies for my trip to Boya and the major monies. Uh, I have indicated before that... Um, I've never been treasurer. I've never been uh, a, a financial secretary. I've never been uh, a signatory to any account that is open for the reception of funds for any reason whatsoever. The only places where I have had dealings to do with money are areas of humanitarian help for which monies come from my pocket a lot to feed prisoners by personal salary. I put it into feed prisoners. I receive money from it to take care of refugees in Nigeria. I receive remove money from it to take care of mentally mental health patients in Cameroon, and also to help 
some homes that are taking care of orphanages and all those who have intervened in national disasters when it concerns issues in Cameroon. And most of the monies come from my own private pocket. I have never been, I, I was held an humanitarian uh, 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 assistant uh, secretary of health and humanitarian services for the interim government briefly, briefly for some months. And that was because I was helping with refugees in Nigeria from my own personal money. I never did any fundraiser that went into any account that I control. Because for any organization, there must be an account, or there must be a treasurer, there must be a financial secretary, and there must be uh, these persons who are signatories. So if anybody, I give a challenge to anyone to show any receipt of any withdrawal from any account that I ever opened, or he or she deposited money in any account that was supposed to be going to my pocket, and that was never used anywhere in the world. A challenge. So, um, I will tell them clearly that I have no dealings with money. Um, usually, it's my own money that I use to take care of things. That I, I, even I don't have, I will give them bigger that I have. If it's ten thousand or fifty thousand, I will say take that is my own share. I don't want to have anything to do with money. That's my rule number one. Number two, if someone asked whether I've been to Cameroon since two thousand seventeen when this struggle started. Yes, I was in Cameroon in two thousand seventeen. I didn't go to Cameroon during the Grand National Dialogue because I was so occupied with my work, not because I was scared. Because the government had given a green light to everybody that was coming, that if you come, you will not be arrested. And that promise was made because nobody who went there was arrested, apart from a small issue that Padi Asanga had in the jail when he went to visit the prisoners. That was the only issue he had, and it was briefly, and he was out. The issue is, I was not scared of coming to Cameroon because I didn't believe that when that dialogue was taking place, there was clearance given to some of us who had, like, been overtaken by the marginalization protests to belong. Because let me tell you, there are, I've told you before that to have protested for the Anglophone issue, which is marginalization, the, the, the struggle with the lawyers and the teachers that came out and all those things, about 80 to 90% of all Southern Cameroonians took to the streets and they were not necessarily for the separation of Cameroon. They were not necessarily for the separation of Cameroon. They were out to air their grievances. And so if you air your grievances, you air your grievances at that time, and the idea of Ambazonia came, which was a product of the non-resolution of the Anglophone crisis that gave birth to the Anglophone crisis, to the, Ambaz the Anglophone crisis gave birth to the Ambazonia issue. When the Ambazonia issue came, at the early days, we were trying to digest the thing. We we're trying to know, trying to research more and know how we can use it as a tool to mount pressure on the government to heal or to heal to the to the call for federalism, the call of uh, uh, marginalization, the call to this, it was never meant to be a weapon to convey definite independence uh, 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 that will be enforced by 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 military by by by, by armed 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 means by armed means. So at the time that we discover that it's going to escalate to an armed conflict, some of us tried to talk sense into some of the leaders and uh, warned about some of these things, but none of them could listen to us anymore. And so what happened? We had to leave it. We had to resign. We had to engage on peaceful means. We had to engage with the people of Cameroon. Someone mentioned about CPDM. Let me, I will bring my belonging to CPDM. I want to mention that categorically, it, Every Cameroonian from 18 years above has an entitlement to belong to a political party of choice. The people who call themselves separatists today are members, were members of the SDF and are still members of the SDF. Honorable Weber is a member of the SDF. So Dr. Nick is a member of the CPDF and an Anglophone. Akwanga Ebenezer has his own party. 
Sese kwa ajok tilo stabe, has it had his own party. Yerima has his own party. Well, let them, all of them show me their resignation from their various political parties. None of them have resigned from their own political party. So it is no problem that you believe that you are Cameroonian, that you still hold a Cameroon passport, then calling yourself an Ambazonia with no Ambazonia passport, but holding Cameroon passport, flying on airplane with Cameroon passport. You are deceiving yourself. So what happens? We bring reason into this thing. We make people to know that the truth is that engage in a dialogue, say that this Ambazonian option came as a result of frustration over the inability to meet or resolve the Anglophone problem. Then the government starts to understand, the international community begins to understand that a child can be frustrated and go to an extreme. But when the child realizes that the father also has used too much force on him, and he too has gone into an extreme that calls for reconciliation, that calls for apology, that calls for seeking for amends, and that calls for fixing of conflict. Conflict resolution is a very difficult job. We understand. We at the one World Congress are not going to be the mediator, except the both sides accept us to be, and the both sides can decide to act to give their own members to add us, to add our own population. But let me remind the population that the one Cameroon Congress is made up of ex, ex or resigned separatist leaders and resigned combatants who are now proposing some little articles of peace and trying to bring both parties together as an option to avoid further escalation and further victimization and further deaths okay. on the ground. Let me take... They are not working for the government, they are not working for the separatists. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. I appreciate the doctor for realizing himself and making a U-turn. Sometimes people know they are in the wrong path but feel ashamed to move back and correct them. Let's pray peace returns uh, someday. Richard is writing from uh, Kumba. Good evening to you, uh, Richard. Uh, Sumbele Kelvin writing from Kong Samba says, Good evening, Mr. Liu. Nice program as uh, program. Yes. Doctor is really talking with great inspiration. Keep up the spirit, Mr. Liu. Good evening to you, uh, Kelvin, writing there from uh, Kong Samba, Mungo uh, Division. Good evening, Mr. Kum. My suggestion to Dr. Santos and Dr. Yes is that they should start by talking to individual parliamentarians. Help the parliamentarians whose hands are tied to secure a third party to coordinate the talks. Ni from Bonn in Bengui. Good evening uh, to you, Ni. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. How do you want to call separatists to talk? And your agenda is one uh, Cameroon, okay? Um, Mr. Liu, when uh, asked this question, when you left the side of armed struggle, did you have any form of communication with uh, the Minister of Territorial Administration? Now, do you communicate with him? If yes, what are your reasons given the fact that Cho Ayaba accused you of joining with your brother from Bermenda, Atanganji, to betray the struggle? Thanks, uh, Mr. Liu. More grace. Uh, God bless uh, for your work. Okay, um, now, were you brought over, doctor? Thank you. I will, start, I will start with the last question. I'm very sensitive to that last one. Were you brought over? A good one there. Yes. Uh, Mr. 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 Leo, Mr. Kuhn, I want every Cameroonian, every Southern Cameroonian listening to this to understand that I have been in school in life for 25 years. I have worked in the U.S. for 16 years. I already have a paycheck. I already have a system in the bank whereby at the end of the month, 
I don't need to go and ask money for rent. I don't need to go, go to ask money to pay my loan. I don't need to go and ask money to pay my car loan or my bills or stuff. The Cameroon government cannot buy me over. My conscience bought me over. My conscience bought me over. The suffering of my people bought me over. Because if you ask the government of Cameroon, they will tell you that first and foremost, they don't have the money to give us the kind of money that is able to buy us over. Because if I'm to be bought over, and I have to tell you the amount you have to buy me over, it will be so heavy. That is better not even to do it. What has prompted me is, I have made it clear that when you have taken an oath in your profession, that's why we have to stay by those oaths because for doctors, especially who have sworn this oath, for lawyers and for teachers, we have some oaths. And if I find that I am going to violate this oath by going to harm people, cause injury on people that will lead to death and other things, I have to, I have to make a U-turn. And I've explained that. That's what made me to make a U-turn. Someone asked a question about Atanganji, whether I've met Atanganji. I have never met Atanganji face to face. Neither have I ever spoken to him, even on a phone call. The only thing I have done is I have written a letter to Atanganji, the minister, Minister Atanganji. I wrote a letter to him explaining to him my new stand and how we intend to work for peace and how the government should be ready to embrace the peace task force initiative on as a means to assemble all the disgruntled leaders of the separatist side in the diaspora so that we can engage in meaningful conversation to resolve the conflict and i have never had a reply from such letters, from that letter, that particular letter, I have never had a response, an official response. But I had confirmation that the letter reached where it was destined to. Then, as for Yaoundé government, the people who began the dialogue consultation with me in the United States are still in touch with me. And if I have any concerns about peace, I address that with them. Just the same like, not only I, but the members of the one Cameroon are in touch with all of them to ask whether they will be ready for such conversations. Okay. Whether they will be ready. Separatists say that we are ready. We need to talk now. If they come out with a joint statement that we endorse one Cameroon Congress to, take, to be taking a pre-mediation position of bringing us together and then their job is ended. Once they bring us together, one Cameroon Congress job is ended. We are either fired or we are rehired. Okay. I will be very glad to make that very clear. Okay. And then there, there's another last point. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. Go please. Ahead. This one says, place me, uh, play me and dirty man. Oh, I don't have that... Uh, we don't have time to discuss how should I go playing uh, music. Um, good evening. I am Majiba Tama. We want all sons and daughters to join us for peace and love uh, for Cameroon. I'm writing from the United States of uh, America. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. I wish to say a big thank you to Doctor for his wisdom. Uh, these uh, leaders in the diaspora should stop using their Cameroonian passport. Then we will then know they are serious to separate. I am in ground zero and we feel the pain of all what is happening. Rivers is writing from Bali. Uh, good evening to you, uh, Rivers. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Doctor is talking well, but is making errors. Who is he calling the son and who is the father when we look at the root cause of our problem? Pangala, my teacher, is writing from Womb. Good evening to you, uh, sir. Glad to um, read from you. Stop calling, please. 
Good evening, Mr. Liu, saying that Anglophones were frustrated is not true. They were rather disappointed and saw self-defense. Stop the calls. They were rather disappointed and saw self-defense as the last option. I can remember vividly how intellectuals... Can you stop calling, please? Now, um, we are almost out of time. Uh, one question I want you to talk about is one Cameroon Congress. What are you guys doing with respect to schools? Are you very comfortable? Are you um, okay with the situation of our schools in the Southwest and Northwest region, knowing that we are soon going back to school? Mr. Leo, thank you for that question. Uh, one Cameroon Congress has one agenda. The agenda is to ensure that the both sides engage in discussion to end this conflict. Coming to dialogue, right on written pages of the missing pages of the Grand National Dialogue. That's what one Cameroon Congress is all about. And I, I saw Mr. Chairman Majiba Taba, one Cameroon Congress, who made a comment there. So, uh, I regard, with regards to schools, uh, one of the primary reasons why we brought up this at this time is because the earlier uh, the pre talks can start, the earlier the pre talks can, can commence, then that will mean that. Uh, in the pre-talks, the school issue can be addressed that nobody should stand on the education of the children. The children, the youths of today are the leaders of tomorrow, and the education of the children stands at uh, the, the most uh, treasured uh, 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 a blessing that a parent and a nation can give to its young ones. So uh, the One Cameroon Congress is uh, pleading uh, with both sides that there should be a safe school return, uh, all the children should return to schools. And the fact that one Cameroon Congress is already looking at a way through which the government, Cameroon, is talking and engage in a, start engaging in pre talks with all the separatists, the 82 persons. Uh, this will be a very important uh, uh, milestone achievement because uh, when they start discussing something, who will come up? I believe that, I believe God Almighty that. Uh, uh, in God Almighty, that He's going to pour us the blessings with which we'll go about this uh, in a very smooth way. So, for schools, uh, one Cameroon Congress will plead with the separatist leaders to restrain from attacking teachers and the schools and allow the schools to return while we engage in this process. But we have seen them also to come out with a joint statement to endorse uh, this initiative because that will also serve as an incentive or an encouragement the government to also give their response. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Kum. We appreciate this lofty initiative by our brother. My problem with me is the CPDM affiliation. If we are where we are today, the CPDM contributed 70% uh, are being totally neutral. Would have been better. The, that affiliation is scary. Just think about it, sir. Mario is writing from uh, Yaoundé. Good evening to you, uh, Mario. But I think there is a clarification to be done here. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, love the way you expand on your points. Peace is all we want. The crisis keep eating deep because of greed. If those who are coming for the dialogue aren't genuine with their intentions, we shall remain on the same spot. Nadesh is writing from Bamenda. Good evening to you, Nadesh. Good evening, sir. Please, I wish to find out if the diaspora is against school resumption in Ground Zero for the coming academic year. Keeping children at home is not going to solve this problem. Children should be allowed to go to school. This is Matid writing from uh, Ground Zero. I don't know where that is. Good evening to all in the panel. Mr. Leo, you are doing a great uh, job to inform Cameroonians on things happening around the globe. Yesterday, the doctor was with the separatist later. He joined the CPDM to run for what I don't even know. Now he formed another thing called One Cameroon Party. I just don't uh, know. Dixon is writing from Gabon. But I don't think um, doc Dr. Shifting Ground said, Hello, Mr. Suli from Limbe. Ask Dr. what happened with the first uh, dialogue, okay? Um, he was not part of it, so uh, what should he say about it? But uh, many persons think that you are joining uh, the CPDM. The CPDM has been your party for a very long time, Doctor. The, I am not joining. The, I've, I've never quit the CPDM. I've been, I was vice president of the Moliko subsection of this uh, youth CPDM, the youth, in 1990, 
94 or 95. So when you tell me that I am joining the CPDM, I'm not joining. I am being a member for in the CPDM for the longest time and belonging or going to uh, protest in the Anglophone marginalization that ultimately led to Ambazonia, a uh, separatist stop, does not mean that any uh, anybody there has resigned from his political party. And one and one Congress, uh, one Cameroon Congress is not a political party. It's not a political party. It's a peace, a patriot organization or movement. Peace, patriot organization or movement. It is not a political party. Let me straighten that to the scholars brain who understand. Yeah, Mr. Liu. Okay. Um, before we go, let me take some few messages. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm uh, glad with the program. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I like your program. Let the separatists stop uh, taking the CFA francs from the people to show that they really mean business. Joel is writing from Bamenda. Um, this one reads, uh, from prison, this is what Anglophones need. AUP means Anglophone United People. Let us forgive ourselves. We all have seen uh, and faced the future. Okay. Uh, thank you for that contribution from the prison. Uh, good evening, Mr. Kum. It's Lucy from Kumba. Please, I wanted to ask a question again to the doctor that from his speech, he says that he was with the separatists in the year 2016 to 2018. Since then, have you come to Cameroon? He says he was in Cameroon in 2017. Uh, that's what doctor said. I hope I answered yes. that question because we don't have time. Yes. Good evening. Yes. Mr. I was in Cameroon. I was in Cameroon in 2017. Okay. And uh, I have not been in Cameroon since then, but I don't have a problem with coming to Cameroon. Okay. I've made it very clear. Uh, maybe, maybe at the time I was with the separatists uh, at the early days, but when I resigned and realized myself and became a peace uh, patriot and a peace uh, envoy and having peace organizations of which one Cameroon Congress is still another organization for peace, not a political party, because I have only one political party, which is the CPDM. Okay. I want to make that clear, and I don't have a problem with coming to Cameroon. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Ask doctor how much money has he taken from the government. Yes. Um, doctor says he has not had any money because he does not lack money. Good evening, Mr. Liu, I wish to ask uh, Dr. Nick whether he wants to join uh, Cameroon government, celebrate one Cameroon, or to dialogue on one Cameroon. How can you solve a problem where there is no problem? Okay. Uh, Tenzi Tadzenyu is writing from Makba. Uh, good evening, Liu. It's Elizabeth writing from Kumbu. More grace to your program. I pray peace should once more return to our country. Thank you, doctor, for your efforts. Okay. Um, all of you watching us from Kumbu, we say greetings to you. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm enjoying the program. I'm Gofa Wilson Bet, writing from Yaoundé. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Uh, the question is Are both parties willing to dialogue and accept peace? Madam Amin is writing from Limbe. Good evening to you, Madam. Mr. Liu, greetings to you. Please ask the doctor or uh, that the way he talks while in America is it the same way? He can talk if he is in the southwest. Smith is writing from Bastos, that is in Yaoundé. Uh, please, Mr. Liu, ask doctor of those who have double, I don't know, double nationality. Ms. Elvis writing from um, Yaoundé. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I love your program. I'm da writing from Santa. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I really wanted to greet you, and I really like uh, this uh, program. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, coming from Kumba, good evening, Mr. Liu. We pray for peace, okay? Um, good evening, Mr. Liu. Uh, the human rights has asked Cameroon government to release all the separatist leaders. Oh, what does doctor have to say about that? Mr. Pascal is writing from uh, Yaoundé. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Is rich boy from Boya. I love your program. But ask doctor if he will be attending the peace talk coming up. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. Uh, doctor is of the people who okay who should come down to the field and preach uh, peace. Uh, doctor, we are out of time. Um, certainly, we are going to have 
um, I pray that we have time to do another program with you. Uh, we're so glad to have had you on uh, Prime Hour for the very first time. Thank you very much, Mr. Liu. I've listened to the questions, and most of them have answered them. But as a concluding remark, uh, I'm going to say that I am ready anytime you are ready to bring me on air to keep on working for peace. Um, uh, they asked whether I'm going to be a member of the dialogue or a member of the pre-talk. I've made my position clear, which is the position of the one Congress that I represent, the ex-Amber fighters and the ex-separatist leaders who have been working with government and working with the ex-separatists all this while to preach peace. We who are under one Cameroon Congress are only facilitators, are only facilitators to try to make sure that the separatists and the government they can resume pre-talks and hold a final talks or negotiation and dialogue talks to end this conflict. And after that, uh, it is the government, when they begin talking, they will decide if they want to retain us or they want to fire us. Thank you. Okay, so I joined lit, but I would like to get a recap of the discussions. The conversation sounds interesting, but I don't know what it's all about. You are writing from the United States of America. If you joined us late, just go to our Facebook page and uh, follow from the beginning. Uh, my Media Prime Facebook page or BT Media Group Facebook page. Go to BT Media Facebook page. You're going to find this program or my Media Prime Facebook page. Good evening, Mr. Liu. What a wonderful program. May God continue to inspire you. I have a question to Dr. Nick. Uh, what is the fate of the Southwest and Northwest Cameroon as to what is happening on the uh, ground? Uh, this one says, school issues is really the touching part of this problem. Separatist leaders are happily sending their children and family in school, but abroad, and Douala and Yaoundé, I'm Tita Shipu, writing from Yaoundé, the government is also addicted to uh, this policy, which is uh, l'état et toujours fort. Uh, they should think out of the box. Uh, Sonny White is writing from uh, Boya. Ah, the messages are too many. We have to end here. Thank you very much, uh, Desmond and Eli, for uh, producing this program. Tabi Tambe Bryant for supervision. Tomorrow, we are once again going to be discussing about the plight of workers of the CDC, Cameroon. Um, Development Corporation, most of them, they, we had a program days back where the workers decried their situation. They said that they have not been paid for uh, months or today. Tomorrow, we are going to be having some workers of uh, the CDC live on this uh, platform actually share with you the, their plight, what they have been going through, and what they think the Anglophone community can do to come to their assistance. So tomorrow on Prime Hour, we're going to be having workers of the CDC with me on this platform discuss their plight and what they expect from the government of Cameroon. And from you all watching this uh, program daily, we want to thank you for patronizing our Stay Blessed. Bye-bye.